This rusty old smoker owned by Senior Master Sergeant Schneider needs a little fixing up. So Greenhorn Barbecue Beer Crew to the rescue. We're gonna sneak over to his house and take it from under his nose. We're headed over to Yoza and Todd's house right now. We got Pete from Pete's Garage Workshop. And of course, the man behind the camera from Desert Oak Barbecue, Rob. <laughs> Hello, everyone. So we're heading over that way. So we gotta be really sneaky because uh, this guy's in the Air National Guard. And, you know, so he's, he's, he's a trained killer. So <laughs> he already knows we're on the way. So we're gonna get over there and we're gonna be really quiet. We gotta get in. And Dioza is her accomplice. And her daughters also live at the house. So, and I'm not too sure how much her daughters are into this. So we're gonna go in there and sneak in the backyard as best we can. So we'll see you there. <laughs> so we just got a text from Dioza and apparently our Mark, Todd, <laughs> is still home this, is, this must be the one time of the year that an Air National Guardsman gets sick and doesn't go in for a drill <laughs> weekend because it happened to us. So we're waiting, we're waiting to find out whether we should sneak in while he's there, which isn't my plan, or if we should plan another day. So we're gonna find out here in a minute. So Rob went to go over and stake out the uh, the Mark's departure from the scene of the crime, but uh, he forgot to take a walkie-talkie. All right, so our Mark, Todd, Dioza's husband here, just left. We had to wait around the corner and practically hide in the bush and bushes. In fact, Rob was in the bushes, and he forgot his... Uh, <laughs> We forgot our walkie-talkies that we brought, and so we were doing seal signals from a distance, but he didn't see us. So, but we got here, and we're gonna go ahead and go now and go get the smoker. Okay. All right, so we're going in the backyard, and we're gonna see the smoker. Todd loves his uh, grill and he loves barbecue Brazilian. He makes a tri tip instead of picanha. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he learned how to make a, a whole chunk of meat. So this is his, his girl. That's his baby. <laughs> That's, his baby. <laughs> That's his baby. Well, today he's going to get a new baby. <laughs> I think he'll be surprised. Maybe might think my mom did it because she did ask him if she wanted to clean the grill. Um, he told her, don't worry about it, but uh, he'll definitely be surprised for sure. He's gonna be really surprised. He's gonna be sure. really surprised? Tri-tip. Tri Tri-tip. Why does he like tri-tip so much? I think my mom. Yeah, I think that's just his specialty at this yeah. point. And he kind of likes to brag about it because like whenever people try it, they're always super like, what did you marinate this with? Blah, 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 blah. And he's like, oh, like, just, just salt. salt. <laughs> and then people came and people were asking him, what? oh, Todd, that, this meat is so good. How did you marinate this? And he said, oh, take salt. And he likes the fame, so <laughs> he started doing that. And it, yeah, it's really good. Oh, that was my gift. Uh, I chose this one because the, he is always talking about um, smoking the meat. And I know there's nice smokers out there, but that's what I could afford. So I gave him this with the little smoker on the side. Yeah. So about two years and a half ago, uh -huh. he is the training manager. He oversees training in the, for the whole base. Or Channel Islands Air National Guard Base? Yes, yeah. Channel Island Inter uh, National Guard Base. He is a senior master sergeant. 
Senior Master Sergeant. All right, not bad. <laughs> um, I'm also in the Air Force at Channel Islands Air National. That's right. Um, I work in supply. Supply, right on. You can't go without supply. Yeah, so I'm currently finishing off my last year at Ventura College. Um, so I go there, I'm obtaining my business degree with a concentration in marketing and minoring in communications. And I'm also a part-time student at, U at USC where I'm in the Air Force ROTC program. Awesome, awesome. I'm in sixth grade and I go to school in Camarillo. I thought, I'm sorry, I was telling you to go away today. <laughs> this morning I asked you 100 times and I was worried that you would uh, figure out what was going on at, for how many times I asked uh -huh. you. But yeah, my love, sneaky. now that you, mm. you're going to see your new grill, I know you're going to love it and you're going to understand why I ask. It's not that I want you to go away, it's just that we needed to have the grill. <laughs> All right, guess what, Todd? We're about to pimp, pimp your, your grill! grill. Okay, so Pete here from Pete's Garage Workshop is going to do something special for Todd here. Tell us what you're going to do. Uh, thinking about making a recess in this and just kind of slipping it over, shaping the edges maybe. That'll probably look pretty good as a nice little little work surface that kind of mm -hmm. cleans it up a little bit and makes it look nice. Very nice. We've got really nice piece of oak here and uh, it's going to dress up this part of the smoker really nice. Um, looks like there's plenty of room for opening and closing the door. Yep. It kind of actually makes his work surface a little bit bigger. Yep, have enough room to shape the edges and just slip it right on and yeah, I can do that. So Pete's going to go head off to Pete's Garage Workshop and we're going to put a card up here, a link to his YouTube channel, so go check him out for sure. And uh, he's going to go start working while uh, I get this smoker clean. Sounds like a plan. So this company, interestingly enough, went out of business in 2015. At least they filed for Chapter 7 uh, bankruptcy protection in 2015. Not sure what their current status is. It's hard to find information online. I believe they, the name might have been bought by another company. Um, parts are still available. But uh, pretty much if you have a Oklahoma Joe's or any number of common offset type smokers from um, any number of retail establishments. I think you're gonna be just fine if you need parts for something like this, but what we're gonna do is completely overhaul this thing here in an afternoon. And uh, we're gonna clean it up and we're gonna paint it. And of course, like we uh, mentioned, we're gonna do a few other tricks to it. Looking inside. All right, so this particular model, as you can see, has kind of a, uh, a charcoal grate so you can actually grill inside uh, and use this as a grill or smoker. Um, it does have an offset box there, uh, but Todd's style of queuing really, he goes with the direct uh, method quite a bit. So I'm thinking one thing that I'm definitely going to add here is a baffle plate. I'll try to get a better view for you. So as many of you guys know this isn't going to cut it. So I'm going to fashion a nice little baffle plate right there. I might even use this uh, bottom charcoal grill to help us out here. Maybe make some, some uh, tuning plates. Um, I've seen some guys just take uh, foil and wrap them around these kind of a poor man's tuning plate. I think I got something a little bit better than that, but uh, definitely going to fashion up uh, some kind of baffle right there on that side. Obviously give it a really good cleaning on the inside. All 
All right, so there's a little bit of uh, a little bit of rust, a little bit of rust right in there, and uh, started to pit. So I chipped away some of the surface rust. Definitely started to penetrate that metal. So I'm going to treat that just before we paint it, and uh, it should look just fine. Another angle of that rust. Again, I'm going to treat that. And one of the things we're also going to try to do is uh, help out that thermometer a little bit. Um, it's got a little water intrusion. And uh, we're going to try to dry that up. So what we have here to put this uh, smoker on steroids is a couple of these awesome Tell True thermometers and these are real grilling and smoking thermometers made in the USA they have a two inch stem nice easy to read readout and we're going to place one on each side to get the most accurate readings for Todd we can keep this one here this is really just for show as far as I'm concerned but we're going to try to dry it up and fix it up anyway all right, one thing that I noticed that's uh, really nice, this smoker's got some really good bones. Um, it's in pretty good shape. Todd did a really good job uh, taking care of the inside. Uh, scraped away some of that grease. I actually kind of helped protect it a little bit. What I really like is this little shelf for the charcoal grates that kind of run along right there. It's gonna be perfect for doing some uh, little bit of tuning and uh, it's going to leave a nice little area to uh, set up that uh, baffle plate that we're going to separate the fire chamber and the smoke box with. The fire box really doesn't need a whole lot of help. Uh, we're just going to basically give this a general cleaning up and that's all it'll need. It's got this little handy nandy uh, ash tray that goes at the bottom of it. It's got a little bit of rust on there so we're going to fix that up with a little rust uh, inhibitor. And of course, the, uh, the grilling grates are in great shape. Just a little bit of cleanup with some citrus uh, environmentally friendly cleaner, and they'll be just like new. All right, so Todd, uh, we're almost ready to paint this bad boy. And uh, to put a mystery to rest, there's a little bracket that uh, you'd asked me that you weren't too sure what it was for, and I, I think I found out what it was for. You can see a couple little brand new looking bolts right there and there you go there's a little brace to kind of help uh, brace this firebox so you can put nice big loads of uh, dirt in, or uh, wood in there and uh, one other little mod that we did I noticed that your smoke chamber was uh, pretty clogged up with uh, grease and drippings and you had a real tiny hole for that drain so we enlarged it, and uh, it's about an inch wide now. Could be wider, but went with an inch now. Gave you a new little bucket, nice chrome hanger there, and that should do you pretty good. All right, so we're getting ready to paint Brinkman Trailmaster here. Uh, still got a lot of little surface rust dust from some of the sanding. Um, I'm going to really recommend to you, Todd, that. Uh, uh, when this thing starts showing signs of uh, rust again, uh, start wiping it down with good old vegetable oil. Uh, believe it or not, it's a really good, reusable, friendly and alternative to paint. It'll keep the outside nice and shiny, give it a nice sheen, and protect it from uh, rust. Soon to go on, there's your two new thermometers, one there, one there be putting those on here after we paint it and we've gone ahead and refurbished the uh, stalker it was full of some moisture uh, the sassy kitchen queen dehydrated it for you so it got that moisture out of there uh, that's an okay uh, thermometer to have right there but really doesn't tell the true story got your little simple baffle for you there now this baffle is just sitting there it's wedged into your charcoal grates here so I recommend you use this whenever you use your offset firebox. 
uh, I think you'll see that you're going to get uh, more predictable temperatures in here. And uh, But if you want to take it out and use the whole grilling surface, which you have a lot of, uh, just pull that out. It's, uh, it's steel, and, but it's flexible, and it's just wedged in there, so you can pull that right out. All right, there you go. All we got to do is just run it back over. We're going to hide it next door at a neighbor's yard as soon as Pete gets back with his uh, custom-made oak front shelf that he's uh, oiling up right now. We're going to load it up and skedaddle on over there and try to beat Todd home. So he's going to come home and Todd, I don't know what you're going to be thinking, but when you don't see your smoker back there, don't freak out because it's just about 30 feet away. All right, what you got here, Pete? Well, this piece of wood, I routed out the bottom of it so we could accept this little stand right there. Nice. Made some handholds right there, so if he ever wants to remove it and clean it or put a new one on, you can just remove those nice. little screws and... Just fits right on there? Fits right on. Came a little bit more room on here and it's... Nice. Beautiful. Yep. All right. All right, so Pete from Pete's Garage Workshop, appreciate your help. And uh, is there anything you want to say to Todd? Just hope you like it. Looks really great. Many years of service. I'm sure you will. Okay. And uh, we'll, I'm going to be loading this up now and uh, taking it over to hide it. And <laughs> next time we see it, we're hopefully revealing it. Oh, hello. All right, so uh, Sassy's been uh, hanging out most of the day while uh, doing other things, working on recipes and things while we were uh, overhauling Todd's smoker. And uh, we're heading over there now to uh, try to get in there before Todd notices it's gone. I think by the time we get to his house, he's going to notice it's gone. Uh, I got it safety, safely tucked away in the neighbor's side gate. And uh, so even if he sees it's gone, he's not going to find it, uh, not on his property anyway. And uh, so we're going to get over there and quietly try to uh, move it over to his property. And uh, I'm not sure if that's going to be quiet or loud. But uh, so you guys be really quiet, okay? And uh, oh, guys be really quiet. Don't don't laugh or anything like that you might give us away so anyway here we go see you there You probably didn't know I was coming over, huh? What's up, brother? How you feeling? Good. Oh, yeah. What's the How camera for? What? Huh? Oh, it's oh. just a camera? They're just following Todd around today. We came to inspect your smoke. His grill is missing. So he, what? he yeah. We came. He, he's not. Okay, cool. well, I guess we're going out to eat, honey. <laughs> okay, all right, let's go. Are you serious? Your grill's so missing? Yeah. At first he was. Where is, where is my grill? There was Everything's a, coming to match grill? up now. No, no, you're joking. <laughs> my grill's not missing. That wasn't no, part of the plan. No, no, it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't. no. It's missing, and there's no camera feed for like 
There's like a gap. You went through the camera right here. But we didn't, we didn't do that. <laughs> Hi, Deborah. Hi, oh, how here. are well, you? Okay, well, let, me, yeah, let me show you uh, Exhibit A. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exhibit A? He's so yeah, no, suspicious. That. Jeez. Oh, wow. Where did it go? Look, I mean, she even wiped out the footprints. She uh, said, do you know the you that was uh, 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 a real not crime. I mean, well, there's been a lot of uh, break-ins uh, lately. Well, you said we we're gonna come over for a barbecue. You want me to go get mine? Yeah. There, there's a rusty pan. We have a Weber. Here. We have a Weber kettle yeah, that's we um, portable. We got a lot of We got a Weber. Oh, the way. But it's a uh, uh, small. Yeah, we got a Weber. You want a Weber? I, yeah. Come here, I got well, mine. I was thinking about going out and buying a, a Traeger. Instead, just go to Home Depot and buy a Traeger. Are, are you I serious? Are Somebody took your smoke? No, I got a tr You gotta help me walk in. Actually, it's a Oh my goodness. <laughs> that is so. That is so cool. It's a Traeger, right? That Traeger. is better than a Traeger. Well, let's get in the light. Here, let's, let's push that it up. That is nice. Yeah. Yeah, but let's get in the light. Let's. let's do, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, it's awfully noisy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, first opening on your smoke smoker. There you go. All right. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Salute. All right, guys, so we did it. I think we surprised Todd here. Um, first off, I want to say you're good sport. I didn't hear any guns come out or any shotguns <laughs> getting cocked or anything like that. Um, we were able to get in here and, and get the grill on the side of the house without uh, being too noisy. Rob left the truck without, without the walkie-talkie. He went across the street and he was going to be at the lookout. Eventually he left and he signaled us in and we just went in and grabbed, grabbed the smoker at that point. Um, wasn't too hard to get because um, you weren't home. <laughs> but. Uh, so anyway, um, so you've had this for three years. Well, it was in Northern California. Northern first. California? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then you moved to somewhere else and took it? Or? Um, we bought it in Northern California. Oh, you bought yeah. it in Northern California. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's, it's a good smoker. And um, so let's take a little tour. First thing, you've already seen the bottle opener. So that, that's a must. Any good smoker should have a bottle opener on it. So if you guys don't have one, you know, go out and get yourself one. Um, Pete. The, the, Pete uh, from Pete's Garage Workshop uh, donated his time, which is very valuable nowadays, uh, to make this beautiful oak uh, shelf here for That's you. Nice. Um, and I'm sure he'll appreciate that. We'll leave a link to Pete's Garage Workshop YouTube on, in the description. Um, and um, it is solid oak laminated. It's rubbed down with mineral oil. And he did a really fantastic job on it. Uh, the other thing you probably noticed right away if you're familiar with Brinkman's, is we have an addition of two more thermometers here, and these are Teltrus. And uh, they're a little bit smaller, which is fine, but they have a two inch stem. And what we did here for Todd is we wanted to make sure that he knows what's going on with the different zones on a smoker. They're, at, they're more at great level. The one that comes with it, uh, it's a little fogged over here with some moisture, but uh, we also tuned this one to turn it to where 250 is straight up. So. If you're out in the jacuzzi while you're cooking, you can see that needle is pointing due north is 250, which is the ideal smoking temperature. So, so hopefully that'll eventually clear up. If it doesn't, it's a common 3 uh, in, or half inch NPT thread, and it's pretty common. Oh yeah, so we cleaned up the uh, Cool Touch handles. They were uh, starting to uh, uh, get a little worse for the wear, a little bit of rust, uh, and there was a missing nut on the firebox one. So we found a nut and put it on the other side of that for you. And we also oh, treated yeah. it for rust. We took a rust uh, inhibitor uh, and we sprayed and kind of soaked on them uh, with this rust inhibitor for a while and then kind of wiped it off. Uh, and that'll slow down any rust. But you know, as you know, once you got rust, uh, really it's just kind of a battle at that point. I mean, you just got to kind of watch it and stuff like that. Um, so that was, that was one thing. And then, as you can see, we painted the entire rig um, with some good uh, 2000 degree, uh, basically engine, uh, uh, yeah, go ahead and pull it out. We left you a little bit of touch-up paint so you know what to get so it matches. Basically some Rust-Oleum High Heat 2000 F. Um, it's really good. Uh, I use it on my Yoder and a lot of other people do too. 
um, and it, it just gives it a nice matte finish. Um, there was some rust on the back of your uh, cooking chamber, and so what we did is we kind of wire brushed and, and sanded that as much as we could. Uh, we treated it with the same uh, rust inhibitor um, and let it soak a while, wiped it away before we painted it. It kind of slows it down, but once you have rust, you know, you're probably never going to really get rid of it. So in the future, you may choose to start just wiping the whole thing down with vegetable oil, which is what a lot of people do. So the firebox didn't get really much clean up. We just kind of sprayed it down with uh, some citrus cleaner and hosed it down, scraped it a little bit. This um, is shiny. So that was, that's the seasoning. We just left that alone. We didn't really clean other than the citrus cleaner, which is biodegradable, um, and some scraping. We didn't really do anything to the firebox. That's actually okay to have some seasoning, as long as it doesn't get caked up like obvious grease. But a little shine with seasoning, that's fine. That's, that's nothing. Seasoning doesn't mean your meat's going to taste like that. Seasoning is just basically it's protecting the metal with a little bit of sheen of some oil, like a cast iron uh, seasoning, the cast iron, you know. Um, it's really there to protect, make it easier. The oil drain, we en enlarged that for you. I noticed that it was completely clogged up. And, yeah, it, and you clogs had, pretty e it clogged pretty easily. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it was about a quarter inch, maybe not even a quarter, maybe an eighth inch. It was small. It was completely clogged up. I couldn't find it. The bucket you had was pretty useless, so I threw it away. Um, so what we got you is a brand new bucket, and we enlarged the hole to an inch, and then we just used a chrome spring that we found and drew a little guide hole and, and we're just hanging it. So it's gonna drain a lot better for you, which you definitely want to get that grease that's liquid like that out of your smoke chamber when you're in there cooking. That will definitely spoil your meat. If you're cooking in that own fluid and stuff like that, just get that out of there. Um, so, so that's gonna definitely improve the efficiency of this rig. Um, obviously, we didn't have to do anything on the smokestack. Um, smokestack looked pretty good. Um, again, when you're smoking with wood, stack wide open. Um, and then when you're not using it, just close it so critters don't get in there. Uh, rain. I call these rain caps. I don't know if they're really rain caps. Maybe you guys drop me a line and say, what are these called? Smokestack caps, rain caps? I don't know. Okay. So we had a couple don donors, and we got you some apple wood. Some nice chunk wood apple. Apple's really good on, on the lighter, like pork and fish, any light meat, great. Um, don't do apple with the brisket, although you could. But we got you a little bit of that. And to keep this finish clean, um, this is gonna, I, we couldn't really find a cover design for the Brinkman. So we got you a, a, a tarp, and when you're not using it after it's cooled down, cover this up, uh, use some clamps or zip tie, whatever you wanna do to kind of tighten it down. But definitely cover, cover your pit up at night, uh, especially this close to the ocean. You don't want that ocean air getting to it and stuff like that. It'll prolong the life of some of that. And uh, so now, inside the smoke chamber where the magic happens. So the grates, we just basically gave them a basic cleanup. Really, it didn't need uh, much else. We uh, scraped these up, just gave them a really good clean. Uh, we didn't get rid of the original seasoning. You know, we didn't really go down to bare metal, which is fun. Okay, so what we got for you down here is a firebox baffle. So all this is is galvanized piece of sheet metal, steel. Definitely not aluminum. Aluminum will melt uh, in some of these temperatures. Well, we wedged it in there between the firebox and the smoke chamber, which you could basically fit 10 softballs in that hole. It was a huge hole. And so when you're indirect cooking, you definitely don't want the fire to see the meat. So when you're smoking. So that's just wedged in there. Uh, watch your fingers. It's kind of sharp on the edges. You can definitely pop it out of the grate. It's just basically sitting in the edges of that grate there. You can pop it out if you, if you don't want to use it but it's otherwise it's just kind of wedged in there. Um, what that will do, again, it'll keep you from uh, turning the smoker into a grill, and it will really kind of take down this hot area right here to you. So we are just talking about the firebox baffle that we made here for Todd's smoker here, which didn't have one. And uh, we were talking about how that's gonna improve the efficiency of your smoker. It's gonna lower this temperature, uh, hopefully a lot, and you won't have such a giant high temperature here and a lower temperature on the other side. So hopefully it'll even it out just a little bit, make it a little bit more efficient for you, more predictable, more gentler zone, so to speak. Um, if you don't want to use it, if you need more room, I left all your charcoal grates in there. So you can still definitely use uh, charcoal, just pop it out, put it to the side. But, but I recommend running a, a, a firebox uh, baffle for sure.
name's Todd Schneider, and I've just been smoked. Yeah! yeah. Woo! Todd, where's your beer? Where's your beer? <laughs> <laughs> oh.